it into the front of the peloton, probably the closest we could hope for as well, Robbie, I think, without getting our motorbike too close. And there we see that shot from above, the, uh, the colours spread back, five or six for most of those teams who are at the front there. Don't forget we have teams of up to seven in this race. I think Bingol, Wallany, Brutzel, they're always easy to pick out in the day glow yellow. They are all there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, they are, right in the middle. I think all of the UAE team Emirates riders are there too. And then on the outside, Bahrain Victorious, inside them, a mix of Uno X and Human Powered Health. And over to the left, that long line of all the Cofidis riders with Max Walscheid in the red jersey in the middle. And then we have Q, 36.5 Pro Cycling in the grey with those um, yellow Scott helmets on. And on the outside of them, Mobistar as well. Looking to see the number of Ruben Guerrero, where he's sitting back there. I think he is right at the back of that. Uh, Gregor Mulberger actually is the last one of them with the 66 on his back. He has Ruben Guerrero just in front of him with 61 on his back. The uh, Mobistar rider fourth from the front of their line as well. Well, Jez, we're about 6k away from that left-hand turn. They've been riding still now into a, a moderate headwind. That's all around now when it gets in the more open sections and well he's a, a burst of speed at the front so a little bit of crosswind kicking in by the looks mm. of things big dig so by I was going to say we're coming yeah we're coming to that corner which you're going to see them hit more crosswind but there's still a little bit now as well and uh Rayovich, that was a big turn on the front swings away that's like a, a turn to just sacrifice himself up nope, quick breather slotting himself back in at the front so and that's properly smashed up the front end. Yeah. Now we've got a right old mix of individuals in there as well. Uh, a couple of the Bahrain victorious riders. I think that's Buitrago himself. It is the number one on his back. He's third wheel right now. Um, wow. Uh, that's a deliberate, deliberate move by Rayovic for Bahrain Victoria to try and mix things up before they even get there. And Buitrago is tucked down now on the back wheel of Rayovic. They sense they could do something there, Robbie. I don't think it's quite worked yeah. just yet. It hasn't, it hasn't worked. quite worked, but it's certainly putting some pressure on and, and causing some nervous moments as well. Yep, Sander Hansen being picked out there, interestingly enough, in the blue jersey moving up. And what we're seeing now is the back end of our peloton. This is doing damage. Quite a few of the riders who've been in breakaways the last few days who are now getting distanced. And this is uh, Madan, the Bahraini road race champion. And Yumin Juristi, who was in the breakaway today. Oh, sorry. Um, no, that's not, that's not correct at all. <laughs> that's definitely Yumin Juristi, who is feeling the effect of his long solo effort at the end of that breakaway being captured. And still, it keeps boiling at the front end here. This is going to carry on for the, for the rest of the race now, isn't it? Until the final on top of that plateau. Yeah, it is, and just taking a, a closer look at my uh, wind map that I've, I've got open here, it's really changing according to where these valleys run and how the wind comes through them, and, uh, and they are picking up a lot more of a westerly here at this point. Uh, and then I think, at least looking at the map, what it's telling me in this forecast, that when they do turn, they're still going to get crosswind. So uh, a little bit of an unexpected crosswind of the, the general wind direction today and uh, Bahrain Victoria is trying to take advantage of that and the, the speed still pretty high there, 50 kilometres an hour at the moment so none of the big players caught out by that, that pretty aggressive move by Bahrain but it's certainly got everyone on their toes everyone will be really nervous I'm presuming, Robbie, that some information about changing winds is going to be, well, some, if not lots of information about changing winds is going to be relayed back to the riders from the team cars as they're looking at what you're looking at, effectively, that information. Or, do you presume it's going to change on the go or, or is it at the beginning of the day, right, this is what the wind's doing and we stick to that as we look at Ellen Blickra, who has also another puncture, I think, and it might be another rear wheel, no, it's front wheel puncture. Well, that's the, that's the thing, the, the wind really changeable according to these valleys and the, the rock formations and the mountains along the side. So it really funnels through these gaps and uh, it's very, very changeable in this area. In the, in the space of 20 kilometres, the, the wind is, is blowing from three different directions. Of 
course, it still remains to be seen what the wind will be doing up that final climb. But it also remains to see just how tough that final climb is. I remind you, folks, it is a different run in to, to uh, last year, but up the same, effectively up the same mountain, the same slope. Front wheel change with that rattle drill, I think Robbie called it. And Amblikra being pushed back in. Well, that was a much better change. So you see what a difference that drill makes. And it keeps the, the through axle on the end of the drill and just slot it into the fork and then hit the button and it all happens so much quicker than trying to wind it with a with an allen key so a much better way to do it and i don't understand why not all of them are doing that no absolutely you're right i don't know whether they've uh, maybe they've run out of charging points or maybe maybe it's down to what the teams could bring with them no, i can't be that in amongst a toolbox you could surely get a little rattle drill in there as well it is strange to still see people um with those allen keys there we are though anyway we are getting very close to an active sprint point. So they are understandably out here in the blowy desert, quite um, minimalist, these sprint points, and the signs leading up to them too. So we'll keep our wits about it. I'll certainly try and keep looking for where it is. We look up the road. That should be, I think, a blue sign telling us, we could do with seeing it, how far it is to that sprint point. One of the Uno X riders is on the radio. So they are thinking about leading out Marcus Sander Hansen for this one, I think, because Sander Hansen yeah. is there in the blue jersey of the most active rider. And that's the only points that are carried at this sprint point. Some of these teams wouldn't care less about the points here at all. So I wonder whether Uno X might be given free reign. There are no bonus seconds at this sprint point at all, but Marcus Sander Hansen is readying himself, I think, to try and take maximum points. These must be the last 500 metres before the line. Sander Hansen is uh, waving his hand. I think they've got a little bit of a narrowing coming up, maybe, uh, Robbie? Uh, no, they're racing towards that corner, Jez, with uh, nine there kilometres go. to go. Here it is. That's that left hand I was talking about before. So they're all anticipating, and they have been anticipating a change of, uh, of direction, a change of wind direction that comes along with that. That intermediate sprint we get comes with 6.1 kilometres left to race. So it should be exactly three kilometres from here to the intermediate sprint. And you just saw it's like a bunch sprint. Every time there's a corner in these desert races that we often see early part of the season, here in Saudi, UAE, and back in the day in, the, in Qatar and, and still in Oman, which uh, starts next week, every time there's a change of direction on the course, the bunch just surges to be in positions. It's like watching a, a full lead-out going on, just not with a sprint on the end at all, waiting to see, if, is the wind going to do what we fear it's going to do? And then often they'll come around the corner and everything will calm right back down again and say, no, nope, that's not the opportunity, but at least we were here to take it if it was. Yes, I was getting well ahead of myself. You're right, that sprint doesn't come until uh, 6.2K to go or something like that. That was that was the 500 metres to go to the bend that we saw back there. <laughs> that was the sign, the warning <laughs> sign. Bend, bend coming. They've navigated it neatly. They're, thankfully, the road is a lot less sandy up here, but the... the um, the punctures have definitely been coming thick and fast, haven't they, over the last uh, 8 to 10k? And new names moving up to the front. The Austrian Lucas Postelberger moving up, and that looks also like Pascal Ackerman moving up as well. He's a little bit more sprightly today, so I hope for his sake he is um, he's feeling a bit better by the looks of it. Yeah, he's looking a lot better on the bike. There he is on the right-hand side, just uh, in front of that sort of gaggle of the Uno X riders. Left-hand side, Jaco Alula, just bringing Dylan Hunewegen forward. So now, the thing is, we talk about this being a climb, this uphill uh, run to the line and a, a plateau, but it is only one kilometre. So a sprinter on a good day should be able to stay in contact on a 1K incline. It's going to take a, a big ride from some of the you know, these punchers like Vitrago to offload absolutely everybody. Uh, so there's, there's opportunities for a number of different riders, depending on how it pans out, how hard they hit the bottom of the climb, who's in position, and, and if there's those big sort of attack lead-outs that we often see, you know, leading a rider and forcing the pace for them to then make their big attack, get everybody in the red zone before they even place their attack and just explode the field. Where the sprinters are just trying to ride steady state, even wattage, and hope that the riders trying to jump up the road tend to blow themselves up a bit and fall back into the fold. We've got about a kilometre to go uh, to the active sprint point. 
There's our race leader as it stands currently in that green jersey, Dylan Groenewegen. He's still leading the race and the peloton's all together. The problem is we've got a one kilometre rise which goes up to just under around about 8%. Gets, I think at one point it gets close to 10%, depending on which different uh, tracker you look at in terms of the gradient of it. But we know from last year that ridge is enough to split things up. One kilometre of the active sprint point, and I think we are going to see um, Marcus Sander Hansen and his Uno X team try and take those three points there and see if they can take that blue jersey all the way to Morea at our big finale on Friday. Don't forget, tomorrow, folks, is our expected Queen stage. It will have an impact on the general classification, possibly, well, in fact, I expect more than today. That's certainly what happened last time out, where we saw Maxim van Gils go away to take the win at the top of the sky views of Harat Yerowid. That is tomorrow, our Queen stage, Thursday, on this third edition of the Saudi Tour. But this will have an impact. There will be a sort out in the general classification today, definitely. We won't be talking about four and five seconds here and there as we do at the moment. As a reminder, as things currently stand, Dylan Gronewegen is leading the race over six seconds. It looks like Dusan Rejevic is kicking his rear derailleur. Surely that's not going to help a, an electronic mech, is it, Robbie? <laughs> You'd have thought no, that's pretty old school, that. It might just help you to vent your frustration if something's not working <laughs> quite right. But I can imagine there's you know, a, bit, a lot of sand and grit gotten in amongst there, maybe affecting the shifting somewhat. As the, the Q's 36.5 team bring themselves to the front, I've already spotted Jack Bauer there. That uh, rock steady figure of the big Kiwi just uh, grinding a big gear. Now his teammates are coming towards the front as well. Man. We have an attack. Yeah. Who's going tell? They've been doing this, haven't they, the last couple of days, these little digs off the front, and that is the sprint point there. Yep. So I'm just wondering if that's Juristi. I think that might be Juristi who's going for this, actually. I'm not sure. I thought he was being dropped. We'll wait to check the race number. Remember, Jomin Karisti has already picked up points today. He's freewheeling through that, so that was a very definite last little push to get that. Um, and pulls over no, and gets out of the way. It was 114. It was uh, as. No, Azamendi. Well, wouldn't have been one foot in. Mm, but wasn't that Azamendi no. who crashed earlier? Yes. So the, well, I thought that's the number I saw, but as I looked yeah. at the name yeah. corresponding to 114, I thought, no, surely not. I don't think so. But it, um, if, if it is, that mm. is what a comeback. Let's have a, a see if we can get a better look at it. But uh, yeah, nobody else interested in this this sprint. So the rider from Uskatel uh, Uskadi. Un challenge the rest look at each other says so anybody else yeah. going for this no 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 we're all concentrating on the finish because it is just six kilometers to go that rider straight on the radio to say yep i got the intermediate sprint that was dushan revich who was the next to go across the line and he wasn't at all as, as robbie said it's all interested in the sprint really he's just keeping that tempo up at the front for his team bahrain victorious want to well, it does go to show you can attack off the front of this group. It is going hard, but there's enough, if you've got the impetus to try and go clear, to at least go clear for a few metres, if nothing else. Bahrain Victorias are going to try and use their strength in numbers to lead, we presume, Santiago Buitrago into the base of this Abu Raka climb. 5.4 kilometres coming into that last 5k, and Kofidis move up now as well. Moving up, I suspect, Ruben Fernandez. He rides with 41 on his back. Look at the rock-steady shoulders in that red jersey of uh, Max Walscheid. Still right up there to copy this man. A lot of fast men still right in contention, Robbie. Yeah, there'll be a lot of those fast men, like Walscheid now, going to the front and working for the team, working for their oh. climbers today. Yeah, we're talking Flip about the climbers. elbow from Walshide. Saturday on the world's biggest ski jumping hill. stages of this year's third edition of the 
the Saudi tour. My name's Jez Cox. I'm alongside Robbie McEwen, and we are bringing you uh, a few picture break-up moments because we are in amongst the bigger hills here as we've gone to the most northerly point of this year's Saudi tour, right up along, pressed up alongside the nature reserve at uh, Harat Urawid, all the way into Abu Raqqa, up the valley road as well. So lots of big, tall hills to get in the way of our camera shots. Thankfully, we are bringing you clear pictures right now of what remains of our peloton. We had five riders clear earlier on today. They were brought back in eventually. The last one to be surviving was Shomin Yuriski. Yuristi, I should say, from Yuskatel Yuskadi, who've been one of the most active teams today as well. The Bass team really animating this race on uh, multiple stages. Well, As 4. Robbie's 4. been two kilometres to go in this uh, stage three of the Saudi Tour, and you could be forgiven, Jez, for thinking, are we at the Tour of Utah or the Tour of Arizona? The landscape just really incredible, really re resembles uh, some of those U.S. states as well. And the ridge line that they can see on their right, they're riding around it, and very shortly they're going to take a sharp right-hand turn and be riding up the flanks. Robbie, look at Dusan Rejevic here. He is in some kind of form, isn't he? I'm not sure why he's just gone off the back there, whether it's been riders in front of him dropping the wheels, but he's just thundered right the way up the outside of the whole DSM team there. He is a man in great form at the start of this season. Here he's we go. He's trying this very, is... very hard to work good, well for his team as well. Sprinted to second on day one. Since then, he's been trying to work for the team, and he's been very, very effective as well. Right, so we're splitting this finale. Steep. Yes, there, well, it was. Wow. Wow, that is uh, quite some uh, comeback, steep. having been in the breakaway as well. So picking up those points there, yeah. that's going to move him right up in that competition. Um, we're splitting this finale up into three different kilometres. This is the gradual rise that then takes us around the bend to start the climb proper, which goes on for another K. And then we have that flattening plateau kilometre over the top. So we'll split it up into those three different sections. We're watching, again, Dusan Rejevic coming right up the outside to rejoin his uh, Bahrain victorious team here. And it's almost as if they've been waiting for him to come back to the front. That is remarkable. This is... Uh, Oh, hello. Ryan Gibbons, the South African, who's going to either have a bike change. I think he might have a bike change, yeah, because he was the rider who's been kicking that uh, rear derailleur. No, he knows. It's not the wheel. It's the rear derailleur, I think. Ah, oh, not happy, understandably. Yeah, that's so, frustration. That's huge frustration for Gibbons, because he was one of the men they were talking about within the team who was a, a good show to get up this steep climb and still be in contention when they come over the top and fight it out in the sprint. Well, that dream is now gone up in smoke and blown away with the wind because Gibbons will not be coming back because look at the pace that's on now inside the final three kilometres and the run towards the right-hand turn. It comes with two kilometres to go. They loop around to the right side and then it rises up in front of them. And from the top of the climb, it's only some 750 metres or so through to the finish line and it should be a headwind. Yep. Uno X and Kofidis right now, duking it out at the front. Max Walshide ready to do his long turn as well. I wonder who they are thinking about today. Is it Ruben Fernandez? Fernandez has been there or thereabouts. And now come the day glow colours of uh, Bingo Wallonie Bruxelles. This is Matteo Manuccelli now, who's doing a turn for them on the front. Jack Bauer trying to make his way through in the colours of Q35, 6.5, I should say. Here we go with that turn, Robbie. Yeah, Grunewegen was just being brought right to the front as well by a teammate. DSM coming through on the right of picture, the men in black with the blue stripes. Getting a little bit skinny there, so this is why it's so important to be in position. And the road starts to kick up now. Two kilometres to go, and the climb is right in front of them. Here we go. This We're is our finish back line. down it. Yeah, that's it. That's the rise. That's the plateau. And then beyond it, you can just see the drop off for the climb itself. It brings them to that long straight where Robbie expects there to be a bit of a headwind pressing them all the way down there. How much will the plateau play in this? We really could do with going back to seeing the front end of the race here. And this is UAE Team Emirates who have given a big, big lead here. So we thought Ackerman was looking good today and he's gone really early. Really early. He did move up pretty quickly earlier and I thought he looked a bit more sprightly. What a great move by the German, but he's gone incredibly early at the start of his climb. Is this the little satellite move to tease things clear in a Formula or otherwise coming through? Look at this. This looks like he's at the next Stebar. Yep. Just trying to see through the haze of the picture. It looks like Stebar to me. What a move by a man throughout his career. He's been known for the late attack. Big move by the former World Cyclocross champion. 
in fact, how did we not think of Steve when we're thinking of a, yes, a hill like absolutely. this? He's been racing cyclocross. He's in good form. He's been racing really well on the on the dirt and in the mud over the last few Butrago. weeks. And what's Sorry, the, Robbie. Butrago's yep. coming as well. He's tees clear. Santiago Butrago, the man who won on this climb last year. They're over the steepest part right now. What a brilliant move by the man who's built a career on being a late attacker as well as a brilliant team workhorse. We're watching uh, Marcus Ander Hansen going out the back by the looks of it, the blue jersey. I wondered on oh, another problem for the UAE. I'm wondering whether that was Formolo there actually, Robbie. It looked like it might have been with his bike down at the side of the road. Wow. Could have oh. been. Gradient <laughs> kicks up again. Look at that. There's a little dip yeah. down, so we weren't over the worst of it. It kicks up again. 13% the steepest gradient. And Stibar at the moment, he's holding off Bertrago, but he's closing in. The gap is shrinking. These two off the front, and the chase is lit behind. Try to come back across to them. I think this is harder than last year, Robbie. I think this finale is harder. The double kick and that really steep moment over the top there. Steve has got Butrago with him. Those two are clear. One kilometre to go. Santiago Butrago, who was the highest place finisher in second place on GC one year ago behind Maxim Van Hils. He is hanging on, but the chase from UAE is coming back. Maybe that is Formolo there. I'm looking to see who the rider is who's on the front. There's a lot of looking around there as well. Um, Ruben Guerrero is right there. Second wheel in there, but he's got the white jersey with him too as well. Well, Jonathan Milan is there. I think Jonathan Milan is there, Robbie, if I'm not mistaken. He survived yesterday's winner. He's still there. We're going to see a sprint finish. This is coming right back together here. This is a large group coming back together. Confidence on the front now. And Consoni is there. Simone Consoni, Jonathan Milan on the right side, just gone through. And Team Uno X is uh, Blinkra, the one who's got himself up there as well. The fast man, the Norwegian from Uno X, Dylan Grunewagen. He's out the back, so is Walshine. So it's a really thinned out group. 300 metres to go, and it's lighting up with Uno X on the front. Blinkra is at the back of this line. Natural fact, I'm not sure that isn't Soren Ronskold as well, who's there. Ronskold is the tall rider. I think she thinks like a wheel right now. Jonathan Milan goes again. 200 metres to go. He was unbeatable yesterday and he's gone super early. Can Milan hang on and fend off the Uno X battle? Milan's giving it everything he can, but he's not going to get this, or is he? Right on the line. I think that's Sean Ronskold who's just taken the win there. I might be wrong, Robbie. Looking at the front-on shot there, popping up late. A massive drive by Uno X, who've got the win. Wow. Wow. That was, that was so close between him and uh, Jonathan Milan as well. I thought Milan might have had it. <laughs> Perfect. That is one way to describe it. And uh, Milan, he tried to go long the same way, the same recipes he had yesterday to beat Dylan Grunewagen. He did go long. He cut back across the front of Consoni, who got a little bit balked. But it was the tall figure from Uno X, and I think that is Soren Wallenskold, who's come yep. back over the top, if we're not mistaken. There it is confirmed, number 51. We spoke about wow. him earlier in the day, that it's a real strong man's finish and quite a large group that came back together. As, uh, our race leader going into today, Grunewagen, still making his way through to the line. The leader's jersey will change hands today and looks like it will be going onto the shoulders of Jonathan Milan, who finished second. But uh, Warren Skuld, he is the stage winner in Abu Raka. Ah, uh, he is the... World under-23 time trial champion, Soren Welschgold, the Norwegian. He was fourth in the sprint behind Dylan Groenewegen into K-Bar on stage one, so he knew he was in good form. And by the looks of it, Uno X getting right behind him today. Not Erlen Blikra, but Soren Welschgold, the, uh, the Uno X Norwegian rider who showed just how good he is, sprinting and holding off. Yesterday's winner, Jonathan Milan, who, as Robbie said, understandably, is going to be definitely moving up into the race lead today because he'll get a six-second bonus as well. Here we go again. Let's look at it from above. Yep, yep. Moving out to the left there is Milan. He's out in the wind already, so he goes. And look at where Warren Skold is. He stays in the wheel of his teammate, and he picks up the slipstream. Consoni gets a bit balked. That opens up a bit more room for Warren Skold to come across, and then it's full power. That smaller gear, just like yesterday from Milan, he's trying to hang in there, but Warren Skold, he's on that big gear and just rolls up and over the top. Consoni fades into fourth and it's Guerrero but a clear win. Wadenskjold Milan and in third place from Astana I'm wondering if that may have been Case Bol who was able to hang on in there
So the big Norwegian for the big Norwegian team, Uno X Pro Cycling, gets the win on top of this rocky outcrop on the plateau above Abu Raka. Soren Wernschgold, the Norwegian Uno X rider, the world under 23 time trial champion, showing just how good he is in a long drawn out sprint over the top of a plateau too. But Jonathan Milan, a day on from a big win in his road career yesterday, second and so close right on the line. I'd love to see the side shot of that actually. Case Bolt, once again consistent sprinting, but not quite able to get the win today. Oh, actually, it's looking like it's Consoni. I'm not sure about that. I'm pretty certain he had a 41 oh, yeah. on his back, which is Ruben Fernandez. Oh, there you go. You're, if it, we'll go with what you spotted there, Robbie, because I haven't seen his face that clearly. And there is the rider who's going to be giving over that green jersey, we believe, to Jonathan Milan today. This morning, uh, when you saw the, the profile of the stage, did you feel that you could win this one? No, I, I didn't know. I just knew that it was was um, a little bit steep climb, but, uh, but it was quite steep uh, at the end before it went went downhill again. So I uh, I surfed a little bit back on the peloton to save myself for a sprint. So because I knew that when the guys went really hard in the bottom, I couldn't follow. So. And yeah, so we did it perfectly. And today we uh, we took the right side, so we finally uh, got the win from the from the left, and then we got some uh, yeah we got less wind uh, wind on the right side. So compared to uh, to yesterday, where we we did really bad uh, at the end. So yeah, we learned from yesterday, and today we we did it. World champion a couple of months ago in Wollongong, uh, winning the uh, individual time trial of the uh, under-23. What's it like to uh, win a, a professional victory in, in front of the, the, the big boys? Yeah, it's uh, fantastic. I ch waited for this uh, for some time and I haven't been so close. I've been good in the under-23 class, but I haven't managed to, to take a pro win. So this is really, really... Yeah, really uh, fantastic. <laughs> it's also a great moment for UNOX. UNOX have been impressive for the last three days. Not very lucky. This is a, a, a great reward for you guys. Yeah, uh, we have uh, two uh, fourth uh, on the first stages. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, really good and good for the morale in the team. So, we try to continue to do well. And uh, tomorrow it's uh, it's uh, Jakub, uh, Jakub's turn. So... I think he can do well in that climb, and yeah, you saw him today. He was the he was the one of the lead out man man today. So yeah, <laughs> well, congratulations, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. The questions there from Seb Piquet, uh, and understandably, slightly emotional sounding guy. He is the world under-23 time trial champion, as uh, Piquet mentioned there as well. He's also had an illustrious and um, uh, deliberately pointy career in the last couple of years in the Tour de l'Avenir, the Tour de France for under 23s where he's won three stages and performed very consistently throughout. So a guy who's possibly got a future headed in the direction of uh, riding the Grand Tours and consistency showing in that way as well. He's a big powerful rider. Um, Robbie, can we call that can we call that a sprint finish? Certainly a lot of the big sprint protagonists were still there. Leading group, reduced yeah, group sprint finish thinned out group sprint and uh, Milan explaining this is how you got me and uh, Warren Skull saying yes I know <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'm going to play subtitles for you on that one hey, pretty impressive mm. to see uh, Case Ball still up there and, and riding himself into third on Sony there in fourth so a number of sprinters able to hang on over the, the top of that steep climb but then it came down to a guy who's uh, more of a time trial type with a bit of explosive power and was able to keep on keeping on. Wilden scrolled over the top of Milan. So Milan knows now how it feels to be Dylan Grunewig. And he suffered that yeah. fate yesterday. And now there's always someone else coming along. And today it was certain Wilden scrolled from Uno X. Beautiful win. Well, there we go. What a lovely shot showing. It's not quite as flat as we thought up on the plateau. For those of you who are just about to leave us, thank you for your company. Do join us for the Queen's stage tomorrow. From Russia, Daniel Medvedev. And from Serbia. Novak.
avec Djokovic. Rafael Nadal! So here she is then, her final departure.